Alright guys, Red here. Welcome to Red's Resort. Today we're going to be taking a look at the Drake Interplanetary Cutlass series. Now, I know this is an important ship to a lot of people, so I'm going to be doing my very best to provide the most accurate and detailed information I can find. We are going to compare all the variants and see some of their strengths and weaknesses and do a little tour slash review along the way. Before we begin, I'd like to say a big thank you to Niels Gerdes and Laura Spence for being channel members and patrons. Thanks very much guys, it means a whole lot. And a very big thanks to everyone else who watches, subscribes, likes and just chats in the comments and stuff. Thank you all so much for your support. Let's begin. Drake was founded in 2845 by Jan Dredge to produce the Cutlass Medium Fighter. Drake has cultivated its image since then to appeal to those seeking a less than conventional design. Their ships have characteristically robust and geometrical designs that utilise many low-tech materials. The former CEOs Jan and Don Dredge cultivated the outlaw image from the beginning of the company, which raised controversies about Drake's responsibility for pirate-related crimes. After losing a UEE contract bid in 2845 for a low-cost, fast-production Volts fighter ship, Drake Interplanetary reappropriated their design, the Cutlass, as a civilian craft. The initial pitch was to provide ships to private militia groups in far-flung regions of the galaxy that would welcome a low-cost solution for their security needs. Sales were phenomenal, and within five years they became the fifth largest spacecraft manufacturer. And even though the company was at times embattled by controversy regarding the sale of ships to known pirate groups, the sheer number of ships sold certainly provided fierce competition for the likes of RSI and MISC. With all the lore out of the way, let's get down to the hangar and review some ships. This is the Cutlass Black. And we're going to treat this as the default version, so unless I explicitly point out some difference or other between the variants, you should be safe to assume that they're all the same as this model. The Cutlass is a pretty unique design, and it does stand out among the other available ships in the game. Not much changes externally between the variants, they all have this devilishly handsome body that cuts a very distinctive shape. It's not got smooth and flowing lines like what you'd expect most flying objects to gravitate towards. It has these two front wings or arms that hold up these massive plates, almost like shields for either side of the cockpit. They hang quite low to the ground as well, so the whole frame looks like it's some sort of four-legged creature squatting ready to pounce, especially when the VTOL's down. And that invariably turns out to be not too far from the truth when you consider the Cutty's common use cases. The cockpits are all the same apart from the blue and are quite square cut and angular. And we have this talon shaped front landing gear here as well. And from a certain angle it does sort of look like a bird of prey landed with its wings spread over its quarry. These parts on the end of the wing do seem to have been designed with some function in mind and they do look like they were intended to articulate in some way. On top of that, there's an access hatch here that relates to a tractor of some kind. Now, I had to dig around, and the tractor for this ship is supposed to be mounted on the rear, above the cargo bay door, which would make a lot of sense. So this is maybe just a remnant of an idea that never came to fruition, but given its partiality for pirating, it would be cool if this turned out to be some sort of clamp that could hinder the escape of the Cutty's victims in some way, or maybe even a way to undercarry a 32 SCU crate on top of its already decent cargo size. I'm just making stuff up now though, who knows what it's for. If you know, let us know and I'll pin it below. We've got a couple of headlights here, which are really decent quality. Unless you're in a snowstorm, then they are life-threateningly bad. All the variants come with four size 3 hardpoints, which can be either fixed at size 3 or gimbaled down to size 2. There's one on either side of the wings here, and two on either side on the top about midship just behind the cockpit, which I'll show you later on. All variants also come with six size 4 missile racks, apart from the red, which doesn't have any. 
This means that if you installed racks for size 2 ports on all of those, the pilot would be in control of 4 size 3 guns and 24 size 2 missiles. Which I think everyone will agree is absolutely insane firepower. Drake never really seems to disappoint when it comes to throwing tungsten around, I've noticed. Coming around this side, we have this massive side door. There's one on the other side to match and honestly, they just come in handy for all sorts of stuff. Mostly to do with loading looted cargo or bodies more efficiently. These can be mantled into, but you really need to be at the perfect height to pull it off. This will change soon, I think. So that should become a lot more accessible from a greater range of gravities and elevations, hopefully. The other version with these doors is the steel, and the rest have the docking port circular airlock kind. The rear landing gear is pretty standard stuff, but this main thruster here is... Just... She is a big, thick boy. One of the cutty's most impressive features is the amount of thrust this thing can generate. Especially if you're coming into land and would like to slow down very fast. Enabling VTOL will rotate these 90 degrees to point down and can bring you to a full stop from full speed in a vacuum in about 3 seconds whilst using boost. Which is absolutely spine liquefyingly awesome. It's actually got a really nice plasma cone whilst under thrust as well. And it's just chef's kiss sort of stuff. Then we have the rear ramp and main entrance. Pretty straightforward job, very sturdy looking. There's door controls on either side, so that's pretty useful. I'm guessing it's up here, where the tractor module will eventually be stationed. And that will be controlled remotely. I'd be guessing, but it's likely to be from the co-pilot chair. And that should be available on both the black, the blue and the red versions. The other side of the ship is identical, so let's just head inside. Now things start to vary wildly from the other variants. We've got six little flip down seats here to stop your passengers getting concussion when you're performing manoeuvres. The Cutty Black is primarily the cargo variant of the series, so as you can guess it has the largest cargo capacity, which tops out at 46 SCU. The blue and the red have 12, and the steel has none. The internal capacity is also 46 SCU for the Black, but I'm guessing things like that might change significantly with the implementation of physicalized inventory. So definitely double check that for anything after 3.20. This big space means that you can also get a decent sized vehicle in here too, going up as far as a cyclone or even a cyclone and maybe a small bike. Or if you'd prefer, you'd probably get a few mules in here as well. Defo a rock but not a Rock DS or an Ursa, as they're just too wide. There's some door controls here on either side, and one for the back door that's the same. Looks like there's lock functionality planned for them as well at some point. Apart from that though, there's nothing else really in here. None of the components are accessible in the Cutty Black, so you can't be swapping things out unfortunately. Although we do have the beginnings of some of the component housing. As you can tell, because of all the exposed wiring and piping, etc. The Drake aesthetic here is definitively rough and ready. This definitely helps give it that broken in, workhorse sort of look. A no frills sort of package that will just about cover your arse and nothing else. Personally, I love it. I know I'm not alone in that regard. I'm not even sure why that is. I guess in our imaginations, we rightfully expect to explore space wrapped in nothing but tinfoil and duct tape. But I digress, through here we have another pretty spacious area. You might even call it too spacious given that there's no toilet or kitchen etc on board. On the left here we have a couple of storage lockers that can store half an SCU each. Over this side we have gun racks for four medium weapons. And over here we got two beds. Next to that we have the man turret, which is a pretty cool little thing size 5 with two size 3 hard points. Really nothing to complain about. It does give a full 360 coverage of the upper hemisphere of the craft. The only variant that doesn't come with an offensive man turret is the cutty red. But it does have something and we'll get to that a bit later on. That just leaves the cockpit and this is a very cool design 
very reminiscent of our modern day helicopter or twin seat jets with the Rio in the back. This seat elevates just like the pilots which is cool giving them access to four MFDs and they can switch between power, comms, heat, shields and weapons. They also have a 2D radar screen as well. They don't have control of the ship even though there's a stick here which is a bit weird. Maybe I'm missing something there though. Would be nice if the turret was optionally remote as well. But I did notice that from the turret seat you can control most of the things that you can control from here anyways. So if you're only a crew of two and you're getting up to something a bit zesty then the co-pilot could likely do a lot of work from the gunner seat anyway. Then last of all we have the pilot seat. As you can see we've got cables hanging round, we've got a throttle that extends on a boom arm of some kind. There isn't really a wealth of buttons and switches around. We get elevated up so that we are mostly surrounded by glass now. And visibility isn't too bad really. We can see down and out to the left and right which is always good for landing and stuff. Some hefty pillars making up the frame are definitely causing blind spots. But we can see above pretty well at least and a fair bit behind us too if we had to. Six MFDs right up and in your face is exactly what we like. Some pretty chunky looking pedals down here that look like they maybe need a bit of texture work. But I mean, yeah, you definitely get that heavy functional vibe and there's no compromises on the things that you need to get the job done. Switching to outside view, near the rear we can see where a few of the missile pods are housed. We can get a little look at the landing gear animations and also the VTOL animation. Nothing too complicated going on with the cutty. Less chance of something breaking, I suppose. The description reads, Drake Interplanetary claims that the Cutlass Black is a low cost, easy to maintain solution for local in-system militia units. The larger than average cargo hold, Rio seat and dedicated tractor mount are, the company literature insists, for facilitating search and rescue operations. Yeah, searching your cargo hold for goodies. So the main difference here, over the other variants is basically the cargo area. It does have a significant boost in health points over the others with 36,000 versus the next closest which is the blue at 33,000. Either way its value is pretty obvious. Logistically it's probably the best ship in its size range for getting stuff done. You can do bounties all the way up to very high risk target. You can do bunker running. You can do high value cargo runs. You can loot and pirate and pillage and salvage parts and transport things around. There's really not much it doesn't do to be honest, hence why it's so popular. Apart from the obvious stuff like direct salvage and mining etc. But even then, having one on hand for security or storing salvaged materials or spare mining heads or possibly even transporting refined ore in a reasonably defended cargo run wouldn't be that a terrible idea. It's possibly not too great at PvP, but it depends what you happen to catch your prey travelling in. A small fighter with a good pilot would probably kick your ass if you're going solo and maybe even if you had a gun or two for that matter, but anything bigger and it would usually be a fair fight. Plus that missile loadout would defo put a dent in some of the bigger ships if necessary. If you need a decent medium to small sized all rounder, Accept no substitute. And this is the Cutty Red, a definite popular choice amongst the bunker runners out there. Everything here is essentially the same on the outside. The guns are the same four size threes as before, but now we're missing the turret and any missile capabilities. There's some new flashing lights if you want to go full Nino, and these are tied to the main ship lights, so I'll show you them a bit later on. There's a NAV E7 Echo Scanner on top with some extra headlights which can be controlled by the co-pilot which is pretty cool. Round the side we've switched out the big doors for a docking port door. No idea why. Seems like a downgrade to me to be honest, especially for moving injured people around. Apart from that everything's really the same around here, apart from the cool rescue paint job of course. By the way, those decals stay when you change the paint, so you can make some really cool ambulance skins this way. There's lots more emergency lights dotted around the back here as well. 
I couldn't confirm this, but my guess is the remote tractor will be placed above this door too, just like the other variants. Coming inside, we have this separated space here. I have seen a rock in here, and it's quite good actually because the rock opens up at the front, so you can just step out and get access to the cockpit. And as long as you open the back hatch from the pilot seat, everything works out pretty smoothly. I have seen the cyclone in here too, but access back and forth is a bit of a challenge, and you'd have to get pretty creative really to get in and out. Anything smaller than that, all the bikes and the STV etc, should fit in no problem. If need be, you can also fit 12 SCU of cargo in here too, which will be perfect for filling with loot. There's also 12 SCU of internal storage as well. Looks like there's a couple of planned component access points here as well, but they currently aren't implemented. Through here though is where the magic happens. Here we have two tier 3 medical beds. So basically it will put your health back up to full and as long as your injury is relatively minor you should be covered. It will also take away hunger and thirst related issues so if you're running around and doing FPS related gameplay this is the absolute bee's knees for keeping you in tip top shape meaning you can stay out in the field for longer, you don't need to worry about sustenance and you've got plenty of space for loot. Speaking of loot, this bed also serves as storage compartments and each of them can hold 0.8 SCU of stuff. On a side note, I should probably say you cannot respawn at these beds and you cannot use them as beds. We've got the docking ports here and I'm pretty sure that doesn't mean station docking but I'm sure the future plan is for ship to ship docking. So maybe that was the plan for rescues, just in case the patient doesn't have a suit on so we don't have to expose them to vacuum perhaps, just a guess. But apparently these are extra secure airlocks. They aren't, they still open pretty easy if you shoot them. But they do extend and retract a wee bit, which is cool. Very nice animation also, that is a nice door. I approve. We've got two crew beds here, which is a nice little extra, bringing the total to four. And through here we've got another two lockers with 0.5 SCU available in each, another four medium gun racks, the other two beds, and a toilet shower combo looks like in the space where the turret should be. Up here we have the same Rio slash pilot seat combo in the cockpit, except now the Rio can access a remote turret that allows them to control a searchlight, which is a pretty cool feature really. I mean, it would be better on the bottom of the ship, but there's nothing to stop you from flying upside down, I guess. The long range scanner also isn't implemented yet, but that would give this ship another very useful function down the road. Coming over to the pilot's controls, these are identical to the Cutty Blacks, except if we turn on the ship lights, we can activate full Nino mode. The description reads, the Drake Cutlass Red is an emergency response and support ship with a comprehensive medical bay, long range radar capabilities and a suite of defensive options. More than just a top flight emergency responder, the Cutlass Red is a highly regarded support vessel for hazardous combat, recon and exploration. With the ability to revive fallen squad mates and a full onboard auto dock, a single visit to the med bay will ensure that you will always be pulled back from the brink of death. So although the weapons have taken a hit, this is actually still a relatively good all rounder. Still takes a small ground vehicle and some cargo, can still stand up for itself and even do PVE bounties, basically most things the black could do but with less space. Not only that but we can now add frontline support and more robust medical roleplay. When fully functional, those long range scanners will certainly give a nice recon type advantage as well, so the ship could play a dual role, first off as scout and then follow that up with medical support slash extraction for any major engagements. Also remember that scanner can pick up mineable resources as well, so it could be good for a mining crew. The role I see this most used in though is for transport to on foot missions especially to hazardous areas that might mean taking a hit or two, such as bunkers and caves. It's defo my personal favourite when out looting crash derelicts, the sort of activity that always means taking a few scrapes, burns or fall damage here and there, 
and you can fit a 2 SCU crate in the back and just loot helmets and stuff for days. This time we've got the Cutty Blue loaded up. And again, most things are the same, still the 4 size 3 hard points, but we have the turret with 2 size 3s on top and the 6 size 4 missile racks too. This one has the emergency lights as well and is aiming to be an interceptor slash police enforcement unit. The major difference that we notice straight away is the cockpit design has changed. Now we have this smooth rounded version. I think I prefer the look of the other one as the straight lines suited a lot more but I definitely prefer this one for functionality and being able to see out of it. Coming around the side we have another one of these secure hatches. Same on both sides obviously. The only other real difference is the paint job on the outside. This variant will have a tractor up there as well, which should be in the next patch if I'm not mistaken. We're currently on 3.20. Again, where that will be remotely controlled from, I'm not sure. But likely the real seat behind the pilot at the very least. It was teased not too long ago about tractoring actual people. I'm not sure if that was actually serious or not, but I'm sure it was and maybe this will be the first time we get to see that in action. But don't quote me on that. Coming in the back we have a space exactly equivalent to the Cutty Red. It takes 12 SCU of cargo and will comfortably fit an STV with room to get around the sides. Again, no component implementation. The internal capacity of the blue is 12 SCU as well. Again, check that depending on your patch number because I'm sure most virtual storage will get phased out at some point. Coming through to the main compartment, we reveal the Cutty Blue's true purpose. To capture humans and entomb them in these holding cells. Obviously, currently not implemented. But there's 12 of these things that look like you can possibly cycle through them like a deck of Pokemon cards, whilst you transport the criminal scum to a nearby detention facility to claim their bounty. We have the same docking ports as the Cutty Red that extend as well. I guess if you're on a planet's surface because you can't mantle into these, that inherently makes them a little more secure than the big white door. Nothing else in here if not really, so let's just move through to the front. Here we have the same layout as the black two storage lockers with half an SCU each, the four medium racks, the two beds and the turret. Coming up here the real seat is identical with no extra functionality. Strangely that also includes firing the quantum dampener, which I thought would have been a really good idea, but apparently not. As before, most of the real controls are actually available in the turret, so if you're a two-man crew, then that might be the better option. Coming into the cockpit, everything is the same for the most part. We have this really nice open cockpit now though, which is just as good as the other variants for the directions we can see in, with the bonus that it's missing the spars blocking chunks of the view. The only other difference here is the option on the dash to turn on the quantum jammer and obviously the ability to fire it as well. Unfortunately this can't be set to a fire group for some reason and has to be toggled from the dash with a mouse. Pretty weird really and just like the other version the pilot has full control of all the weapons apart from the turret. Also as you can imagine if you turn on the headlights you will also activate flashing light show mode. So you can let any possible perpetrators know they have committed an offence and can now pull over and submit peacefully and calmly for arrest. The description reads, The Drake Cutlass Blue is the go-to patrol ship for militia and law enforcement, featuring an onboard quantum dampener, a versatile weapons package and a bank of prisoner containment systems. The Cutlass Blue is built to protect citizens and suppress dangerous outlaws. So, unfortunately, its specific selling point isn't implemented yet. That, however, shouldn't stop you from putting the blue to good use. Sure, the whole middle compartment is a pretty big waste right now, but that quantum dampener, that weapons package, and that storage space makes me think of one word in particular. Piracy. I mean, not a lot of piracy given the space, therefore not a lot solo anyway, but with a group of other pirates the quantum dampener could be very effective and the guns very persuasive. Apart from that, it's pretty much as useful as the cutty red in the general sense. It can fit a ground vehicle, can still do bounties, it's still pretty capable all round really. It's also the fastest of the bunch as well. 
which will definitely help with menacing innocent traders trying to make an honest living. Last of all is the Cutlass Steel. Now this one has some very interesting design choices. Nothing on the exterior is too different of course. Same 4 size 3, same turret up top, same 6 size 4 missile racks that will let you fire 24 size 2 missiles. Round the side we have the big wide doors that you can mantle that will also allow easy access out of the side for quick deployment. And something else, yep, just a couple of mounted gatlins for your buddies to shoot off the side. Obviously these aren't too powerful but can definitely chew up any ground forces lying around and wait when you're making a hot drop in hostile territory. Then everything else is the same really, apart from that cool steel paint job until you get to here. So this is a remote turret operated by the co-pilot that has two size two hard points available and that's as well as the man turret on the top. If we have a look inside we have another gatling mounted at the rear door which is just epic really. In fact there are five of these gatlings in total and watch this, look at that, <laughs> absolutely awesome, I love it. Then they snap away if you close the door too. All of these drop seats have their own individual weapon rack as well, which is honestly just such a nice little touch from CIG. And that's really all there is. There's 18 of these seats here and if you sit in them I'm pretty sure that bar and stuff comes down. But it's bugged right now so you can't sit down at all. Yeah, anyway, moving through here. We've got the turret with two size threes, the beds, the gun racks and the storage again and if we come up here into the co-pilot seat we should be able to toggle into this rear turret. There we go and it's actually got a reasonable view. Apart from that little bit above us there which is pretty decent. Oh shit, you can shoot in this hangar. Okay and that's it. Everything else is the same. We're back to the square cut cockpit with the spars, but once you're lifted up, the seat isn't too bad. Obviously the main omission here is that there's zero cargo space, making it the only option that can't support a ground vehicle. Don't get me wrong, if you've got 18 friends and got a war going on, this will definitely be the dropship of choice, perhaps. I'd have given up those six seats in the rear or even make them foldable to be able to deploy some ground vehicle for assistance alongside the troop deployment. This would also then allow for some cargo space that could contain equipment and larger ordnance that might be necessary for ground assaults. I'm just saying. The Cutty Steel does have 1.5 SCU off internal storage capacity, but that's not a great amount to be honest when compared to the other variants. Plus the mounted gun on the rear door would have to become a lot more foldable than it is right now to get a vehicle in here. So, Another questionable choice is that it has almost half the health points that other variants do and it's the slowest as well. I know CIG probably want to balance things out to not make any single variant have too prominent an advantage but still the use cases for a dropship full of troops are pretty limited anyway so I'm not sure why it's been nerfed as bad. Either way though, you've got to admit, it is a deadly addition to the lineup. And due to the speed you can slow your ship using VTOL and get those troops out the door, you do pose a severe threat when entering any area of operations. Plus the defensive capabilities whilst doing so are unprecedented. A good pilot with four guns and loads of missiles, a man turret, a remote turret and five door gunners all working together is some seriously oppressive heat to be throwing around. Apart from that, it should work well doing PvE bounties. It's got that extra rear turret, but with the less health, there's definitely a trade-off being made there. So if you're planning to go solo and you have the option, I'd probably take the blue or the black instead. For everything else, unfortunately, the lack of cargo space does kind of limit you. Obviously, all of the jobs that don't require much space can be done, the box delivery, investigations etc, all the usual basic stuff. But outside that I'm actually struggling to think of jobs for the cut of steel. Let me know what I've missed. Boarding parties maybe? 
In terms of manoeuvrability, we are kind of in the middle of the road for the ship size and mass. It's definitely not terrible, and that stopping power with VTOL enabled is awesome for sure. Up against some of the medium combat ships, it does not do bad. Something like the Super Hornet would pretty much run rings around it, but the Ares Ion, the Warden and the Hurricane all come out a bit around the same for turning speeds against the Cutties. Up against other multi-role ships, we come out a fair bit less agile than something like the Nomad, but about the same as the Freelancers and the Holly and the Valkyrie. We are a bit less agile than Terrapin. Against each other, the turning rates for pitch, yaw and roll are all identical. The speeds are ordered as the blue being the fastest for SCM and top speed, then the red, then the black, then the steel. Whilst we're in here, might as well point out the mass difference, the health difference, and the fact that they all have 58% damage reduction. Overall though, it's generally pretty nifty for its size. I always feel inclined to rely heavily on those main rear thrusters though, so I'd be turning early and letting them do most of the heavy lifting, and that seems like the way to go. You could defo have a lot of fun trying to race this ship and do canyon runs etc, some low flying, it's definitely not off the table. For PvE bounties, you could solo all the way up to very high risk targets with any variant of the ship. If you're skilled enough and got infinite patience and possibly some crew, you could probably push that to ERT, but bear in mind the red has no missiles and the steel has less health. Personally, although no doubt possible, I wouldn't recommend it. It doesn't seem like the right tool for the job to be honest. For PvP, it's definitely not what we'd specifically put into the PvP category. It's around a C tier PvP combat ship. So a good rule of thumb would be if it's smaller than you, chances are it will kick your ass off. Literally. There are some exceptions though, due to various balances. You could probably give ships like the Hawk, the Buccaneer and the Defender all a run for their money, for example. Obviously, this would be greatly easier if you have somebody on your turret, and if that's the case, you could likely pretty easily chew up any of the 100 series and the 300 series too, which overall makes this multi-role ship a pretty fierce little competitor, considering it can have a full cargo bay whilst pulling all this off. Overall, it would be pretty hard to refuse the Cutty Black as probably the best Swiss Army knife in the game. Yeah, I know. If you've seen any other videos in this series, you might have noticed I use that phrase a lot. Every ship is always the best Swiss Army knife in the game, but this time I think we've objectively really found the one. Whereas something like the Andromeda could be argued to be better because of its tankiness, weapons and capacity, the Cutty is essentially pretty similar but in a smaller, cheaper package, especially for flying solo. In the Andromeda, if you're up against a lighter player ship, your only real option is to hope your armour holds out until you can jump away. In the cut, however, there's always the option to fight, and I'd hate to be in an Andromeda and get pirated by somebody in a cutty, for example. It's definitely a tough call, but I personally feel like the Andromeda is the riskier position to be in, player on player wise at least. So yeah, we're going to crown the Cutty Black the new best Swiss Army knife in the game. That's it, it's official. As for the other variants, they all have their place. The limitation on cargo seems to be the major limiting factor to their usefulness in my eyes. I've definitely spent a lot of time in the Cutty Red though, so there's no denying the usefulness of having a med bed around. The other two are pretty specific in their use cases, with the blue being the more all round of the two. Some good competition to the black would be the Freelancer Miss, the Nomad and the Valkyrie. All of which are pretty formidable to be honest. The Valk has less cargo, less pilot guns, but a lot more turrets and more health, but it also costs 4.5 million. The Nomad has less cargo, less guns, more shields and more manoeuvrability and speed, but it's also got less than a third of the health, but it is the cheapest at just under a million. The Freelancer Miss, same guns, more missiles, less cargo and about half the health and is pretty expensive at 2.5 million. So there's a lot of close competition to be honest but most things either get tripped by health, weapons or price. 
if I had to grade all the variants of the Cutty by in-game price to performance against their multi-role capabilities, I'd have to take the black at 1.4 million. Then I'd probably take the red at 1.8. The next one is a bit harder because the steel is really cheap at 1.3, but the blue is the more capable, except the blue costs a staggering 2.5 million. So I'm not sure what should come next. If you know you're going to be doing a lot of bounties with a crew in any particular patch, I'd take the steel because of the extra turret. If you're doing more general tasks, then I'd go for the blue. For a loadout, you can get away with a lot of stock components if you're a little bit strapped. Obviously, you're going to want the XL1 Quantum Drive in there and the FR76 Military Shields. Personally, I just military grade everything, as that should give the components themselves more health. But that's defo overkill. I don't think that there's currently any point in using stealth components, but sometimes they make you feel better. And this might have changed by the time you watch this, so definitely be sure to check that. And that's it. All the Cutlass variants compared and reviewed to the best of my humble knowledge. Hope that was useful to someone. Remember there's a Patreon and membership stuff if you fancy leaving a tip. Remember, like and subscribe. 07 guys.